Blog Talk Radio. Here we are here today on this beautiful Wednesday, as we are here every Wednesday at nine o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and at six o'clock Pacific Time. The Enlightenment Evolution Hour is a part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network, and all of views, opinions, ideas from myself uh, on this show, any guest, any caller may not perhaps be. The same opinion of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. And with that, we want to push forward into some wonderful, amazing things that we want to talk about today. First of all, we have a very, very special guest, dear friend of mine, Brad Johnson, the official channeler of Adronis, also a master of many, many techniques that are cutting edge in consciousness connection. The ConsciousMatrix.com is the name of his website. And that comes from a conscious matrix connection, which is something that he has coined the phrase on in a beautiful way to connect your consciousness to higher self and to all that is throughout parts of your oversoul, expanding outward into many, many different parts of consciousness within your own awareness. He is going to be joining us today. He is also going to be channeling on the second half of our show. So any of you who are interested in talking to Adronis this evening... Uh, getting some questions out there, one-on-one with Adronis, you can call in at area code 347-308-8788, and you can call in, and we'll put you in the queue for the call. Uh, If you don't have a phone with long distance or you live overseas, you can also go to sign up on Blog Talk Radio for a free account, and then you can call through Skype. It's an amazing Amazing show tonight. I already see uh, some callers coming in. If you have a question, please hit the number one, and that way we know that you are interested in asking Adronis a question, and we will take your calls at that point. With no further ado, we are going to bring Brad Johnson in, and we are going to start talking to him about what's new in his life. Are you there with us, Brad? I am here. Thank you so much for having me on today, Rob. Oh, no problem. Uh, I know that there, and normally we go through the history of the person, we go through the channeling experience, things of that, but you have been on this show, this is the fourth appearance, Uh, we know you well here on the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, I know you personally very well, but could you, for, for those people who might just be tuning in who have never heard of your work before or who you are, can you let them know on the quick insight of who you are, what it is that you do? Yeah, definitely. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Brad Johnson. I am the founder of ConsciousMatrix.com. I'm basically what's known as a Conscious Matrix communicator. What that represents is just kind of an amalgamation of everything that I've learned within the past six years, representing psychic ability, channeling, mediumship, uh, Akashic record reading, healing, etc. It's basically one who is connecting more to the reality body, transcending past the physical body. So what that means is that through the reality body, you're able to access a lot more uh, information in regards to how reality communicates through you. So that basically represents the idea of communicating with other people and kind of looking at them in the observational sense, being able to understand a plethora of multi-perspective rather than the idea of just a self-perspective. So it's a transcendence uh, moving past the self and being able to access more of the universal mind naturally and being able to communicate as a matrix. And as a matrix, you're basically just, uh, you know, in, in embellishing yourself or incorporating yourself rather 
uh, how to become part of, of the reality body. So basically being able to work together with reality, working together with event and understanding exactly how event uh, operates on this planet, being able to look into paradoxical mechanics, looking into universal principles, and understanding more of the vastness about you know why we're here, and kind of more of in that sense full circle knowledge and behind the scenes knowledge of what's taking place in our reality. And and when you first uh, connected to this concept and when you started integrating that into your own life, can you explain how you felt that this was different than what you were doing before by simply um, channeling or connecting to a Dronus or what you seen was different and what you were doing than most other people who were also sharing um, the same kind of work, channeling, mediumship, psychic, uh, intuitive? How is that different? Well, the whole idea is that when you're connecting to a channel, you're basically looking at another tier. You're looking at the idea to where there's a platform above you, and you are working to communicate with that channel as that channel represents a liaison or a mediator in regards to receiving universal information and funneling it down through you as you meet that particular signal halfway. Uh, that's a lot of what I've done. I've, uh, what I have done uh, in the past representing the ability to channel Adronis. Uh, so again, that really is a channeling aspect. When you're moving into conscious matrix communication, you're on the same platform as that consciousness now. So it's no longer the idea that there is a hierarchy. It's more so in the idea that there is an organization or a pool pertaining to information of this perspective. Uh, Adronis is able to come through and give some really, really profound advice. Uh, but basically, it's kind of like we're just sharing the same platform. I'm no longer having to you know, try to feel that he is in the upper stairwell on a landing and having to kind of throw me a rope and uh, for providing this information for me. It's that we're uh, kind of coming together in cooperation now and being able to uh, move into the state of conscious matrix communication. So again, conscious matrix communication just allows you to connect to that multitude of different perspectives and just seeing yourself on that platform on a similar ground. So you're both on the same ground, nothing is higher or lower, so to speak, and you're just letting all the energies of the universe communicate with you, uh, again, as you connect more deeply to the universal mind and you're understanding more about how to operate together within the reality body or otherwise known as rainbow wisdom. Yes, and, and this brings me to another question for you. There are two new things that you are doing. Well, there's lots of new things that you're doing in your work <laughs> and in your life, but the two that are brought to my attention most closely – Let's talk about the first one, the Psychic Academy. Uh, now, this is something mm -hmm. that I've seen, I've looked into. This is an online place to come and have classes about many different things. Can you tell the people a little bit about what the Psychic Academy is, how you thought of it, how you started it, um, and all the things that are there? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, the Psychic Academy has been on my mind uh, for almost about a year now, uh, I just started doing a lot of uh, teachings uh, here in my local area, Vancouver, BC, Canada. I've also uh, done uh, online teachings, online classrooms through Conscious Matrix uh, for quite some time. And I really wanted to reach it out further. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I was doing uh, in those particular classes locally and in the classes through uh, Conscious Matrix were mostly crash courses, uh, getting the idea of just kind of summarizing a lot of information it's kind of like you're putting it all into a vice and you're just kind of crunching it in and saying here you go here's here's a compressed crash course about you know psychic ability or intuitive development etc and even though that uh, you know some of the uh, classes were about four or to eight weeks long uh, there was a lot that got accomplished but i felt that wasn't enough and i really wanted to be able to bring it into much more of an extensive program an extensive academy uh, that would come through and that, w that is basically what the Psychic Academy represents. It is an extremely extensive program. Uh, we're basically taking everything from scratch. We're basically starting right from you know, the cleaning of the slate, and we're beginning again. So basically what that means is people who maybe you know, 20, 30 years into their spiritual awakening now have the opportunity to relive the freshness of that awakening once again. And that's basically what we're doing at the Psychic Academy. We're showing you exactly how you can further refine yourself to the purity of connecting yourself to your own uh, psychic abilities, to looking into your own inner core, looking into your own inner empowerment, developing your healing all over again, and of course, and of course incorporating whole new methods that I've never even discussed uh, that basically are just coming together 
uh, right now, I don't believe that anybody else is discussing. There's a lot of different uh, techniques, uh, methods, and teachings that are coming into the Psychic Academy. So basically what it represents is it's a 100-hour uh, Psychic Academy program, which means that after 100 hours of online classroom time, not only are you becoming certified as a universal psychic through the Psychic Academy, which again we'll talk about in a bit, but only you're also able to become eligible to teach your online teach your own online classes uh, as a graduate, uh, moving into a psychic mentor and actually getting paid for them as well too. So this basically represents the idea that you can become a paid, uh, contracted psychic academy facilitator, uh, teacher, and a mentor. Uh, and being able to host your own online classes and uh, teach everything that you are learning to the Psychic Academy uh, online and being able to put your own spin on things as well, too, as it's all about your own uniqueness and sharing that together. So right now we have quite a few students, and uh, again, our lists are building. Uh, so we do have quite a lot of spots that are still available uh, for the first semester, so to speak, for the Psychic Academy, which usually is about you know one or two months. Uh, and then after that, we're able to get uh, more people to come in but uh, the Psyche Academy is basically uh, this whole new idea that has been in my head for quite some time, and now it's being brought into uh, solid reality. Uh, it's just really, really amazing. A lot of the stuff that I'm teaching in the class right now I have not talked about before. Uh, it's just really, really profound. Uh, the people that are a part of the classroom, the students, are incredible people, and uh, they're just enjoying the ride as much as I am teaching it. Uh, and I really just got to the point right now where the funny thing is, I guess I could put it, when I'm doing these uh, conscious matrix communications, I don't know what I'm doing to do know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, that's kind of the funny <laughs> thing. It says, I know, I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing, right? That's kind of the funny way of putting it. It's kind of a paradox. Uh, but, you know, there is just that natural confidence that comes through and the natural clarity because I'm able to answer questions uh, that I really just haven't pondered myself. Uh, and that's really how uh, everything works in regards to conscious matrix communication. But the Psychic Academy uh, so far has just been a really great introductory achievement. Again, if people want to check it out, they can just go to www.thepsychicacademy.com and you can go ahead and you can sign up. Uh, there are enrollment packages available. Uh, there's a lot of information in regards to the course that's going to be available. And uh, there's going to be a free consultation package that's going to be available on the website that you can just click on. Uh, it'll be an introductory video giving you a bit of a, a highlight tour of the academy that I host. And then after that, uh, you can go ahead and check, uh, you know, check it out and go for an enrollment and become part of this really amazing school. Uh, it really is just, it blows me away and I'm just, I'm the one facilitating everything. So it really has just been a major, major introductory accomplishment. Well, the one thing, you know, getting to know you over the past years, um, getting to be able to spend uh, time with you and, and connect to you, one thing that I've learned about you is that you have always integrated into not just your channelings, but teaching other people, the classes that you do, the workshops you do, cutting edge stuff, stuff that no one's thought about, no one's talked about, no one's really done before. And when you do that, you you know, like when I teach people channeling, I will sit there and I'll teach them a standard thing, something that's worked for me. And depending on the person, we might wave through here or there with something. But you always take this cutting edge stuff and then you mold it and facilitate it to each person's strength and each person's intuition as it connects to you through that matrix. And that's something that I've always found amazing is how... Uh, well, your intuition on top of your conscious matrix, on top of your ability to uh, facilitate this cutting edge information and be able to turn it into something so unique for each individual. Um, what is, is that just internal guidance that helps you get that? Is that your connection through that conscious matrix or is that just the way this new material comes out to people because it has to because we have to grow and expand? Right. Yeah. I mean, really, there is just a process where it is really all internal. And I don't even realize uh, that, you know, when people tell me, uh, well, Brad, you know, what you're putting out is just it's so cutting edge. It's revolutionary. It's something that's never been done before. It's, you know, basically paying homage to a lot of the ancient teachings and refining it into a whole new modern way. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> because, you know, I just don't realize that I'm doing that. It's just really that this is just so natural to me. And it feels like even the phenomenal, everything that represents 
uh, knowingness that's not really known yet, uh, that's just coming through me, it's just interpreted through me as something that as if I already know it, which I don't. Uh, a lot of things that I talk about, uh, I have never talked about before. And that's really what I continue to strive to because, you know, we, we, I'm really just looking to take a lot about metaphysics and spirituality and consciousness and bring it into a new modern age. And it's just about time that we do this. And I, I've seen some other people who are starting to do this as well, too. It just really represents the idea that you're so much in the flow. You're so naturally intuitive. You're connecting to that inner self, that inner aspect of yourself that all this information just becomes natural. Uh, so even when it's really profound information, I mean, just with uh, what Adronos has been sharing as well, too, with a lot of uh, uh, fundamentals pertaining to healing or pertaining to how people can help to enrich themselves, uh, as well as what's being shared in the Psychic Academy, uh, is, is basically very revolutionary in the way I can put it. But I don't really give too much thought in regards to what's being shared, because it's kind of like I'm just busy, 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 on the go, on the go, on the go. And so I just release a lot of this information. I put it into a video or, I, you know, I, I talk about it through the academy or you know, something with the Dronus, with an event, and I let that go. And I say, here you go, guys, check it out, okay? And so people contact me, they're like, holy crap, you know, I've never heard anybody talk, you know, uh, like this before relating to this information. And I, I do get that a lot. And uh, it's just basically something that has just become so natural to me and just so vivid and lucid and uh, I live uh, everything that I talk about so it's not just the idea of saying oh this might be kind of cool I guess I'll talk about it even though I have no idea what it is uh, it really is just being able to uh, you know being able to walk that talk and even if it is something that's very new and revolutionary that I haven't seen then I think one of the first things that I do just after talking about it almost right away is saying okay I want to check this out for myself and saying well here's what I've discovered here's some information coming through uh, this is what I'm being told and then uh, I go ahead and I look into that further myself. So it really is just uh, connecting to your own inner guidance, realizing that you'll have things that come up that you really have never considered before or looked at before. And that's just the beauty of creation. That's the beauty of synchronicity. That's the beauty of how all of this is coming together, is that through the power of words, we're able to transform ourselves so much. Well, it's it's something. Uh, the other thing too that I, I've seen that you were working on, I, I want to ask you a little bit about. But uh, the reason I'm asking now instead of uh, waiting a little longer, uh, your new book, Rainbow Wisdom. Um, you you express that that's the guide to unlocking your reality spectrum. How does this play into the work that you've been doing at the academy? How does that play into the conscious matrix concept? How, uh, first of all, uh, for those of uh, people who might not have heard of this new book that you've released, Rainbow Wisdom, can you tell them a little bit about that and then let us know how that ties in to anything that you might be doing at the academy or your conscious matrix program period? Yeah, I think the best thing to do right now is I can just kind of read the back cover here and people can get an idea of what it is. But Rainbow Wisdom is my newest book. It's just recently been released. It was out uh, effectively November 1st. Uh, you can grab an online digital copy through ConsciousMatrix.com. Uh, and there's also a link on uh, my website that will take you to Amazon if you want to grab a physical copy. It's basically 108 pages. So again, it's a pretty easy read. You'll be able to get it uh, finished probably within a few hours of reading. But basically, I'm just going to read the back uh, part here of the book. It says, reality is here to serve you. Rainbow wisdom represents one who is in touch intuitively and psychically with all spectrums of perspective through reality. As you understand your connection to all life, you gain a profound omnipresent viewpoint that brings you into a greater sense of purpose far beyond what even the greatest imagination can perceive. Through this book, you will understand how you can develop yourself as one of the rainbow wise. You will also gain further understanding on how to develop the ego as an ally to expand your awareness in unimaginable ways, attracting and managing thoughts that will bring you into new realities enriched with your personal compliments, looking into the science of manifestation and how you can understand how events and times are flexible to your conscious will. Develop your intuitive and psychic abilities to improve your connection to rainbow wisdom perception, access the infinite universal library, the Akashic records, and much more. So again, really the rainbow wisdom is kind of a very simple guide uh, where you're looking into a lot of these uh, conscious reality techniques, being able to understand more about uh, you know, why the ego is here. Why do we have a programmed ego? How did the ego get this out of control with all of these programs? How we can uh, soothe the ego down? and being able to function it as an, Eli, as an ego ally. 
being able to look more into the heart of reality and see how reality can work together for you and rather than the other way around. Uh, so again, it's really being able to look really, really deeply into the concept of reality and showing you exactly what you are capable of as one who allies themselves with life and with reality. And by doing so, you're going to, again, you know, transform your life into everything that you want to do. Uh, I'm just basically living proof of this uh, because, you know, six years ago, I never thought I'd be doing this kind of work. And uh, in this past six years, it has been such a remarkable journey. And it's just, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm flying the skies right now. And it's just been something that I never thought I would get into or be involved with, but I could never imagine a day not doing what I do. So again, Rainbow Wisdom is just kind of a very, very uh, small book that really is just showing you exactly my personal journey and how I'm integrating this into knowledge uh, being placed upon the words of these pages contained in the book that can assist you and help you go uh, as far as you want to, uh, becoming part of the Rainbow Wise. Well, that's beautiful. And, and that kind of taps into the Academy Conscious Matrix because that's exactly what those things are, are focused to do is to let yourself integrate with yourself and to use the portions of your intuition to spark that and to really integrate that. That's something that I've noticed a lot of people um, – have been kind of connecting to their intuition on levels that maybe they're not even aware of. They'll have these thoughts that pop up instantly that are right on point, right on target. Um, they don't even realize that they're doing it in the moment until they go back and reflect on what they're talking about. So it's a beautiful way uh, to kind of make that into a culmination and, and uh, connection in that too. Um, when you're When you're thinking about this bigger picture, of what your work is, of all the things that you're lead or you're being led to do, what is it that is the funnest part about connecting to all these people, about teaching, about learning, about channeling? What what's the funnest thing um, for you to do that helps you integrate yourself into a bigger picture in in basic life, every day to day life? I think it's just the idea of understanding perspectives. And I think that's that happens to me when I'm with uh, people who I'm doing sessions with or people who I'm just talking to naturally. Uh, when you really get into these, this flow of uh, intuitive guidance and you're moving more into conscious matrix communication, you're becoming a matrix yourself. Everything in reality is now just becoming completely you know, revamped with yourself. You're understanding more about the perspective of reality that you didn't know before. And you see it through the people you work with. You see it through the nature that you just walk through. Uh, you see it through the beings that you're able to communicate with. You see it through your own consciousness. Uh, with me, it's kind of like uh, something for me to kind of learn as well, too, because I'm always so busy and on the go and you know, doing a lot of sessions and working on new projects. There are times, too, where I don't really stop and acknowledge and see how far I have come. Uh, there have been times where I've done a little bit, but uh, it's just, you know, there's, there's such demand coming on, upon my time right now, a very positive demand, of course. But, uh, you know, again, that's something for me to also take into consideration as well, too, is just, you know, just giving some time to really reflect. And, uh, you know, my mind is always going 1,000 miles per hour. It always has new ideas, new concepts, you know, new uh, innovations for videos and projects that are coming together. But it really is just being able to be fueled by so much excitement with what I do. And, uh, again, I just couldn't imagine myself not doing this anymore. Uh, this is just something that, uh, you know, I dedicate my entire life to this. You know, I, ate, I eat, drink, sleep, breathe this. Uh, so this is something that I could, uh, you know, the whole essence of it to me is fun. Uh, being able just to pull up my camera, you know, get everything all set up and do a video with Adronis coming through and talking about these revolutionary remarkable topics is super exciting to me uh you know being able to talk to a person who's purchased a session off me and being able to talk to them through skype or through phone is extremely exciting to me uh being able to put the psychic academy together uh teaching online classes from people uh anywhere in the world is super exciting to me uh being able to create rainbow wisdom was really exciting to me so there's so many things that are a part of this that are so exciting to me and it's kind of like looking at the aspect of your children, you know, you know, everything about this is just like giving a new birth to life. And so I'd say that really everything that I do uh, relating to conscious matrix communication and channeling Adronis and, uh, you know, developing all these new projects uh, is pretty much the most exciting thing to do. Well, that's, this is, uh, for those of you who are just listening, this is the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with your host, Rob Gauthier. We have a special guest today, Brad Johnson. 
Uh, we're talking about a myriad of things. We're talking about Brad Johnson's work through Psych Academy, his new book, Rainbow Wisdom, also Conscious Matrix, and just what his work means to him and how it's assisted other people. For those of you who want to give questions to Adronis on our second half of the show, you can call in at area code 347-308-8788. Make sure that you hit the number one on your uh, phone dial or make sure you hit one if you're calling from Skype. And that way we know that you have a question. You're not just listening in from your phone. We will be doing that in less than a half hour. And we have a line of people. So first come, first serve on the question. Sometimes we don't get to everybody. But if you want to call, again, the number is 347-308-8788. Now, Brad, I, I know that we've talked so many times on this show and we've done kind of a history. But for those who might not have, have heard, when... First of all, how long have you been channeling? And secondly, when you first met Adronis, what in your mindset has changed from then till now? And I know it's it's a lot of things, but the most simple things yeah. uh, that are easy for right. you to express. Yeah, well, the very first time I started channeling was in December of 2008. That was when I started, well, I guess you could say when I first started channeling Adronis was December of 2008. Uh, it was basically starting in October of 2008 where I really got into channeling itself. Uh, I awoke in August of 2008, and uh, it was all through a science fiction novel that I created that's available now. It's called Day Zero, and uh, it was based on something entirely different at that time, which was just all about extraterrestrials, and just try attempting to make this as a nonfiction science fiction. Uh, through that, uh, emerged in a humongous awakening. I guess you could say humongous in that way. Enormous, gigantic awakening, uh, just being able to go into meditation. I had never done meditation before that time. And just being able to go into meditation inspired by a lot of the research that I found about this book, uh, where I put the book aside and got into meditation, I started going uh, through these nightly downloads. Uh, everything changed from the moment that I just uh, you know, started researching this novel. Uh, that was the benchmark to where everything had changed for myself. And uh, getting into meditation, looking into healing, looking into channeling, because channeling was actually probably one of the very first things I was the most interested in. Uh, besides meditation. So I use meditation as a tool to really help myself to connect deeply with my being. And I guess the best way I could put it is almost kind of like those first-person shooter games, uh, the first-person experience games, uh, because I was going through uh, these amazing uh, holographic uh, experiences internally, where you just kind of feel like you're walking through doors, you feel you're, like you're living this kind of life right now, but through these amazing grids of consciousness, walking through these doors and like putting your hands on crystals and, you know, just kind of going through all these feelings and actually being able to sense what it is to pick up like a crystal or an orb in your mind and feeling this download. And I could feel it as soon as I was touching it uh, in a lot of these meditation states. So as I started to grow a lot more, I wanted to look more into channeling because I would see a lot of people uh, who did it online and it was very, very inspiring. And I never thought that something like that could be done. So I really started to go into automatic writing. I learned from quite a few other channels uh, who uh, taught me a lot about what they did. And then I was just basically taking their concepts and transforming it into my own way and being able to do channeling. So just basically starting off with a simple meditation, you know, clearing the mind, letting yourself relax, following the breath, and just being able to set your intention. And as you set your intention, you can you know, have like a notepad down, and just start writing information that came through. Uh, you may have a question, and all this information came through. So I was communicating with a lot of different collective consciousnesses at that time, uh, representing that of uh, the Pleiades, uh, Lyra, uh, our own sun, our own inner earth. So there were quite a few uh, consciousnesses like that that I was channeling, and it was really, really great information. Uh, but it wasn't until a friend of mine told me that, you know, you have very, very strong connections with the star Sirius. And I feel that around you right now, there's an energy uh, of a Syrian origin that is attempting to get a hold of you. And it may just be good for you to do an automatic writing experiment with this tonight. So I went ahead and I did that. And uh, when I did that, uh, Adronis came through and uh, his flow was pretty much the clearest out of any other one that I got before that. You know, being able to connect with these collective consciousnesses took time. Uh, but as soon as I connected with Adronis, it was bam, right away. And his flow was just incredible. Everything was instant. There was just so much uh, joy in my heart coming through, communicating with Adronis. And basically, I just asked him, all right, well, who am I speaking with? This is Adronis of Sirius. And so a lot of the, 
this information was just profound. It was a lot about what I was going through at that time, you know, getting uh, separated from the ex and, uh, you know, moving on and starting my own path into more of a complementary nature. So uh, a lot of the profound things that Adronis has said has been vast. And yeah, like I said, if you have anything simple, uh, yeah, it's really just been that everything has been 180 degrees. Everything that I thought reality was before I did this, reality wasn't. And uh, this is really the biggest thing, uh, being able to understand that reality is by interpretation, that we all have the capability to create a life that is so profound to us uh, we are basically, uh, you know, gods in training. That's exactly what Adronis has stated. You know, we're gods in training, just attempting to learn how to love. And uh, that's that's how we are able to transcend ourselves and move more into that state of a, a greater beingness. Because all we're doing here is having 7 billion people on planet Earth who imagine that they're separate and seeing how we can get along. And that's that's the biggest challenge. And it really just starts with ourselves. And so he's really helped to bring me into an awareness of what I'm capable of, what I've been able to, you know, uh, accumulate through all of this information that has come through me and just being able to walk the talk. You know, he's really talked about reality as by interpretation or understanding your connection to all things, uh, being able to have uh, science of the simple principles, seeing how easement and simplicity is the key to how everything within life can be achieved and accomplished, that you don't have to struggle, that you don't have to have so much effort. Uh, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's so much information. I'm trying to go back to a lot of the simple stuff that he has talked about, but it's just, it's very, very vast. It's being able to see that you are, you know, being practical about being completely impractical. You know, looking at all of these paradoxes uh, about how they complement our life and, uh, you know, that we're not really here to learn, we're here to unlearn. And it's being able to understand that knowledge itself is overrated and that we're looking into pure understanding. That's the key of why we're here. You know, knowledge is only meant to serve as a process to understanding something that is true to your heart. And so knowledge is basically just like this vast ocean that we are charting and being able to discover a path from one land to another land while we're crossing this vast ocean. So again, there's no shortage of knowledge. You know, trying to feel that you're here for knowledge would be no different than trying to pick up a straw and try to suck the ocean dry from it. You know, it's not going to happen. So you really need to look in the idea that knowledge only serves as a process to bringing you from one point to another that represents the true advancement of yourself. That's beautiful, and thank you for sharing that part, too, with us. Um, my question on a personal curiosity, I have had the opportunity to connect to an entity who is on a very high uh, dimensional plane, as some say, or as I would see, a higher density than any of the physical entities. And in that way, that is sort of a collective. That was so young and fresh in my channeling, though. Um, a lot of that kind of got lost on me because of the overwhelming energy behind it. Right now, um, I feel like there's a, a collective out there who's already talked and, and told through Trev and Artis that they were going to connect to me. So I'm trying to figure out, for you personally, or for any other channelers who you have talked to, what is that difference in not just the feeling and energy, but the information that comes through from collectives compared to singular consciousnesses like Adronis or like Treb or Bashar or any of those entities? Yeah, the whole idea is that Adronis really isn't a singular consciousness. Uh, he basically represents a liaison speaking on behalf of a collective. So it really is a collective that you're talking to. But basically what you're doing is you're representing a liaison who is, again, still working together on behalf of a collective consciousness. But in a way, there is a singularity there. Uh, from the collective consciousnesses that I've worked with in the past before Adronis came along, uh, it was very, very uh, almost kind of technical in that way. A lot of information really doesn't have a lot of emotion behind it. There really is no personality behind a lot of those energies relating to a raw collective consciousness. It's kind of like you're talking to kind of a harmonious robotic collective. Uh, a lot of them is just really, you know, purity of feeling. But there really isn't a lot of emotional tie-ins to, you know, the, the idea of a personality construct. It's really that you're moving more into a higher degree of logic. And that represents the idea where there's love very, very uh, strongly. Uh, but being able to work together with a collective consciousness that really doesn't have any individualized complexes. It's just being able to function together completely within the social memory platform. 
So through that, it's just really uh, connecting with all this data. And I do that with the Consortium of Infinite Intelligence. That's, uh, that's something that resides on all dimensions, that resides on every facet of life. It really is a microcosm to macrocosm connection. And that is just a, a collective that represents all of the stars, all the planets, you know, every single atom that exists is all part of this tiny little fraction of consciousness that I'm able to retrieve from the consortium of infinite intelligence. And that is just very, very high logic. You know, there's no emotions at all through this particular group, but their information and insight that they present is astounding. Uh, again, it's really that when I connect with the consortium, uh, it's not even my own words. It's basically just their complete thought form that's coming through me and being able to convey this message. It's kind of like spontaneously uh, communicating soul poetry in that way. Uh, so again, I do uh, some channelings with the consortium here and there uh, when guided to, but uh, with the Dronus, yeah, it is, there is a personality there. Uh, and there's, it's a blending really, uh, because the Dronus does have somewhat of a personality uh, basically blended together with my own. Uh, it's not as strong as our typical personalities on this planet. Again, most of the personality that comes through Adronis is through my blending as well, too. So it's again, you know, it would be basically if you were to take Brad and you were to take Adronis and you were to smush them together into one being, that's basically what you get when I communicate with Adronis. So there is a lot of that kind of you know, fun personality or direct personality because Adronis has that. But uh, when you're really looking into a collective consciousness, you don't really have that. You're basically just looking at raw information and you're looking at raw uh, material that comes through that is absolutely profound. Well, you know, something that I've noticed uh, throughout the metaphysical community, New Age community, or just people who enjoy the work that we do, um, a lot of people have been having their interest peaked in learning to channel themselves. Uh, if you were to give advice to someone who says, hey, Brad, I need to learn how to channel, what are uh, maybe a couple of different things that, and I know that every person is different, each person has their own way of connecting and, and doing their own thing, but what is the one basic idea, concept, or, or advice you could give them that will help them learn to connect to themselves? Open, trust, and interpret yourself. That's the key. Uh, that's what you really want to do. And again, when I when I when I see people that want to get into channeling, the old me would be like, oh, okay, cool. Let's get you into a channeling class and let's get things started. Uh, I really probably wouldn't do that anymore. Uh, I think what I would do is basically work with the person and kind of see exactly how far they've come. I like to screen the people now that I decide to work with, uh, and it's basically just getting an understanding exactly. Well, how, what do you know about channeling? You know, have you had any kind of experiences that would relate to it's a lot of the phenomena that relate to channeling and basically determine, you know, if we can get right into channeling or not. But really, I would work together on the person's shadows. And I think that's one of the most important things as well, too, because, uh, you know, as fun as channeling is, there's a lot of people that still consider it, you know, very, very, uh, you know, scary or fearful. Uh, they become terrified a lot as well, too. Uh, and it's kind of like just being able to throw this person uh, into an advanced class when they're still, uh, you know, understanding themselves as a beginner. So it really is just being able to work together with the person very, very uh, intensely and uh, kind of creating an intensive and being able to get an understanding about what they're still holding on to with fear. Uh, and I feel that needs to be addressed first. So it really is uh, the, the Psychic Academy is eventually going to be teaching challenge to a lot of the students that are there. But first, before we can do that, we really need to see exactly what shadows you're carrying your, around with yourself. Uh, because, again, the people that I have ch uh, taught channeling to, some have done really, really well. Uh, some are just uh, too afraid to channel uh, because they feel that, you know, I understand the process. I know what needs to be done. I just don't feel I should do this. I don't feel I should go into that avenue because of this, because of that, because of this. And that's understandable. But really, all you're doing is just attracting those degrees of fear into yourself and so that there's no real aspect pertaining to mental discipline, a centeredness of discipline that is needed uh, before one can go that. I would actually teach a person more so to become naturally intuitive and actually psychic before they even consider challenge. Uh, the reason being is because you want to become very, very uh, used to the internal senses that you have. You want to be very, very mindfully aware of the psychic abilities that you possess. You want to be very, very aware about how intuition works. You want to be very, very aware about how you form a bond of oneness with another person. 
Um, I mean, I've done this with my own girlfriend. I'm actually able, I was actually able to channel her own emotions and uh, actually helping them to uh, be, tra- be transmuted. That was something I never thought I could do. And a lot of metaphysical communities are saying, oh, you can't, you know, you can't connect with another person and feel their emotions for them and, and transcend that energy uh, for them. I did, you know, and uh, this was something that, you know, many people thought to be impossible. Uh, it's just really, really amazing because when you have that kind of very deep connection, love and bond with another person, there's, there, you'll be amazed about what you can do. Uh, and it really made a, a profound difference and a whole new realization to what is possible. You can channel other people that are alive here walking this planet just as you are uh, and just being able to communicate with their thought forms and get an understanding in that way. But, uh, you know, that took over six years of intense practice. Uh, So, again, the real key here is being able to look inside yourself and bring your shadows into alliance. You know, your fear is one of the greatest gifts you can actually have on this planet. Some people may be going, what? What are you talking about? Well, your fear itself is a gauge. It's actually helping you to understand exactly where your vulnerabilities are and showing you that you have been unable to embrace your vulnerabilities. Your fear keeps you at bay from expanding yourself. The only thing that fear is, is an inability to change. So if you are able to channel and being able to develop yourself as a psychic, as an intuitive, as a healer, etc., you want to become best friends with your fear. Looking into the fear as a gauge and realizing that it's attempting to tell you something because it's showing you an aspect of yourself that you have not accepted and you're not able to change because the fear keeps you at bay. It's no longer about, you know, just, oh, just ignore the fear. Don't worry about it. Think positive. Think positive. You know, that would be a gigantic buzzer going off in my mind saying, and no, you do not want to ignore your fear. You do not want to shove it under the rug. You do not want to just jump into positivity. You're pedaling backwards when you do that. You're moving into uh, an approach that is imbalanced. You really want to make sure that your fear is uh, acknowledged. That's why your fear is coming to you. A lot of these dark shadows are coming to you, not to scare you, but to realize, look what I have had to go through in extremes in order for you to now notice me. You know, it's kind of like looking at a child that's lost in the dark and they grow up to be, you know, this appearance of a grotesque figure simply because they have been neglected over and over and over again because you wouldn't give them the time of day. And that's what fear represents. And so being part of the rainbow wise, being part of a conscious matrix communicator is looking into your fear as lost children that are now looking to come home. And when I can look into a person like that and feel that they are able to face their fears and being able to really share with them exactly what they are capable of, then shalling will be one of those particular caveats that we can work to. But one of the most important things first is to look into the shadows, look into what a person is attempting to ignore within themselves and bringing a lot of those aspects into light and being able to uh, help uh, train a person to become a phenomenal channel simply because now they understand the mechanics of their own fear and now they've allied with it. And that is really what makes a profound and very accurate channel. Well, thank you. That that brought a lot of clarity to understanding Uh, a lot of people believe it's more of an reaching out externally to other energy thing instead of looking inside of themselves. And I think that's a very important point. Um, we're, we're going to be going to mid show break here pretty soon. Before we do, I want to ask you, um, when you've connected to your conscious matrix energy, and this is something I'm going to ask Adronis also, but what do you perceive, uh, heading around the corner for 2015? It's a big year, big energies, what have you found through the conscious matrix that's going to be brought by 2015 to us? Yeah, well, Jonas has done a video about this. Or actually, we did an event not too long ago about uh, 2015 and 2020, which is basically uh, the, the uh, critical mass effect. Of, there's a lot of great things to look forward to. Uh, you know, again, I, I just say that from my own perspective. I see you know something really, really exciting. I see a really incredible year unfolding. Uh, I feel that this is the prelude. This is basically a prelude year uh, leading up into 2016, which I feel that 2016, in the way I could call it, would be called the year. Uh, and that year is really something that's going to be phenomenal. It really is a, a change, a transformation of great illumination. 
So basically, 2014 has represented a year of unfoldment. It's kind of like uh, you know having a present and being able to unfold the box. And now in 2015, you take out what's inside the box and you put it together. That's really what I feel uh, 2015 represents. It's a year of integration. There's a lot of uh, integrative components that were uh, just on the cusp of bringing into the public awareness in regards to technology, in regards to new education, in regards to new political transformations, in regards to monetary changes. You know, there's a whole new monetary system on, in the works right now that's going to be debuting here probably in the next couple of years. Uh, it, it's vast. There's so much to look forward to. There's just a lot of uh, grassroots uh, systems that are coming up online right now, uh, you know, being people powered. And uh, again, it's just really good to see that the internet is really the pioneer platform to allowing a lot of this uh, grassroots systems to come together. There's a lot to look forward in 2015, but uh, that's just my perspective. I'm sure Jonas can tell you a lot more about it. Well, yes, beautiful, and I, I definitely intend to ask him that. I want to let everybody be aware, uh, if you're just tuning in, this is the Enlightened Evolution Hour with your host, Rob Gauzier. Special guest this evening, Brad Johnson, the official channel of Dronus, the official um, presenter of the information from Conscious Matrix, the founder, owner of ConsciousMatrix.com, and also the founder of the Psychic Academy and author of the Rainbow Wisdom book, we have talked about all of these things. If you're just tuning in, we're just about ready to take our midday or our mid uh, break. Before we get to that uh, midpoint for our network announcements, can you tell anyone who is interested in coming to check out your work um, where to go um, if they want a session with a dronus or if they want to be a part of the academy? Can you give them a couple of websites or places to contact yet? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Again, if for, for those of you who are interested in uh, private sessions with the Dronus, uh, you just go to www.consciousmatrix.com. That's C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S, matrix, M-A-T-R-I-X.com. You can just go under sessions. Uh, you can book a private session there with myself or with the Dronus. Uh, there's also uh, Akashic Record readings that's available looking into your past and future lives. There's also uh, light circuitry attunements, which is a new revolutionary type of healing method that deals with uh, sacred circuitry and holograms. Uh, there's also, uh, there, there's so much. There's a lot of stuff on my website there. There's a lot of courses that you can download as well too, crash courses, so to speak. And of course, for those interested in the Psychic Academy, you can uh, see the direct link as you go to Conscious Matrix, or if you want to type it in, you can just go to www.thepsychicacademy.com. Just feel free to check out the course info, and you just go into the uh, button there. It's called Enrollment, and uh, you'll see the plan is there. And if you want to enroll into the Psychic Academy, there's still quite a lot of spots left. So I'd be happy to have you uh, there. You'll actually be able to create your own schedule online. So the classrooms will actually work together with your schedule and complement. A lot to check out. So feel free to check out ConsciousMatrix.com and the PsychicAcademy.com. And, of course, you can purchase Rainbow Wisdom through Conscious Matrix. All right, Brad. Well, thank you very much. Um, we will be back in about 10 minutes uh, to come get you, and we'll bring in a Dronus at that point. So I'll uh, mute your mic, let you have your 10-minute break real quick, and thank you right. for joining our show, Brad. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, everybody. That's Brad Johnson. He'll be coming back with a Dronus in about 10 minutes. We're about to go to our announcements for the network, but before, we're going to the TrebChanneling.com announcements. Very quickly, um, we have... Online event coming up January 3rd of this year, uh, trebchanneling.com, the Advanced Density Masterclass 2.0, Ardith, the Ancient Pleiadian, will be talking about the intensive density dimension structure. This is everything universal structure, incarnation cycle. If it deals with the structure of our universe, the structure of our consciousness, and the structure of our evolution, it can and will be covered. That's a four-hour event with myself and Ardith being... Uh, moderated by Kalina Angel from the Earth Experience with Kalina Angel on Friday evening. Also, um, February 7th, we will have Walking Your Own Path, myself and Dan Scranton, or Daniel Scranton from Monday Night Show, Heart to Heart Talk Radio with Daniel Scranton, will be doing a dual channeling where you will be able to come in and get your questions answered by myself, channeling Trevin Ardiff, or him channeling one of many entities that he channels, we also have Set in Stone, the channel panel 2, Awakening from Within. Um, this will be eight world-renowned channelers, myself, 
We will have Lee Harris. We will have Sean Swanson. We will have Brad Johnson, our guest tonight. We will have Daniel Scranton from uh, Friday, or from Monday evening show. We will also have Nora Harold, Wendy Kennedy, and one surprise channeler who will be announced within the next month. Um, go to trebchanneling.com. Go to the events tab, either upcoming online events or upcoming um, live events or the workshop for April 3rd, 4th, and 5th. We are doing a three-day intensive workshop, myself and Kalina. We will be doing CE5, learning to channel, teaching channeling, teaching meditation. Also, Q&As with conscious channeling and trans channeling with Trevin Ardiff and whoever comes in. So join us there. It's going to be awesome. Uh, that's all for the Treb channeling stuff. We also have an event coming up in Chicago. Details will be coming very soon for that. And that is all the announcements for TrebChanneling.com. Now we are going to take you to the announcements of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Uh, we'll be back in about seven minutes with Dronus taking your questions Q&A. Remember, if you want to talk to a Dronus tonight, you can call area code 347-308-8788. Make sure you hit the number one on your dial pad. That will tell us that you have a question so we can pick up your phone. If you don't have long distance or you don't live in the U.S., you can go sign up for a free Blog Talk Radio account. Go to the link that you're probably listening on or go to the link on the Facebook page, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. Click on the link, and then it will have a blue Skype button on top by the phone number. Click that. It will connect you right in. We will see you guys in seven minutes. Here is the announcements for this week, Enlightenment Evolution Network. Thank you, guys. Hi, this is Karen Newman from the show About Oneness. And here's what's coming up on the week starting on Monday, December the 8th, until Sunday, December the 14th, on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 and 2. Simply put, Rob Gautier, founder of the EEN and the host of the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, has put together the greatest metaphysical radio network ever. Seven days a week, we have shows that will aid you on your path to enlightenment, evolution, and ascension. On EEN 1, Monday night, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is Heart to Heart Talk Radio with your host, Daniel Scranton. Join Daniel and his featured guests discussing a wide variety of metaphysical topics. Daniel channels the creators, the Hathors, Ophelia the Fairy, Archangel Michael, and the latest, the Unicorn Collective. Daniel and his guests will take phone calls and questions and it's sure to generate high-frequency discussions. You can find more information about Daniel at his website, danielscranton.com, and also on Facebook. Go to the events tab on Daniel's website to learn more about Daniel's upcoming events. Daniel's guest on Monday, December the 8th, is Misty Shilva Jenian. She is a life coach. She has a life coach certification program that she created, and she teaches you how to access your intuition. She will be talking with Daniel about her work, her spiritual journey, and the current state of the shift. She will be online live taking questions. On Tuesdays at noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join hosts Megan Crandomeyer and Rachel Archelaus for radio inspiration, expression, and abundance for their show, Soulfulpreneur. Spiritual business specialist Rachel and Megan will bring you inspiring conversations with people who are living their soul purpose. Frequent guests include psychic mediums, channelers, coaches, artists, and authors. They end every show with psychic readings and business coaching. Your questions about your spiritual business or life purpose journey are welcome. Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, is the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with host Rob Gautier. Rob channels Treb on the first Wednesday of each month and will take callers' questions. On the third Wednesday, he will have special guests such as guest channelers and other metaphysical teachers. The other two Wednesdays are freestyle call-in shows to discuss whatever callers have on their mind. Tune in to Rob on Wednesday nights, and you can also find him on TrebChanneling.com and on Facebook at the Enlightenment Evolution Network group page. Rob Gassier's upcoming events are... On January 3rd, 2015, is an online interactive event called the Advanced 
Density Masterclass 2.0, where Rob will channel Aradif, the ancient Pleiadian, for the most profound information about densities, dimensions, and all things of the universe. This is a live online interactive event that will be accessible from all devices, PC, and Macs around the world. On April the 3rd, 2015, you can spend three days with Treb and Aradif in Asheville, North Carolina during the lunar eclipse, learning to channel. Only 30 spots available. Please go to trebchanneling.com to sign up and for details. Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. Join host Philip Mollica with the Consciousness Evolution Hour. Join Philip and his special guests and co-hosts as they discuss the shift, ascension, timelines, metaphysical concepts, and the fifth dimension. Find Philip at the Consciousness Evolution 2.0 group page on Facebook and on YouTube. Fridays, the Earth Experience with Kalina Angel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. The Earth Experience explores our soul's expansion through our human experiences on Earth. Kalina will help you to navigate and expand through the exciting confusions we are manifesting as new 5D beings. On Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Victoria Vives hosts Earth Sky People Radio, awakening to an intergalactic society, bringing you to greater awareness regarding starseeds and extraterrestrial life, living in harmony with one another and Mother Earth and with life beyond Earth, the Interstellar Alliance or Planet Earth becoming part of an intergalactic society. The transformative power of music, frequency and sound, shamanism, ancestral wisdom and star nations self-sustained and regenerative living, and much, much more. Victoria's guest on December 13th will be Rob Gautier, channeling Aradip, the wise, ancient, Pleiadian being from Deneb. There will be a Q&A section at the end. On Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, is my show about oneness. About Oneness is a weekly radio program focused on celebrating the ongoing conscious awakening of our planet and a realization of oneness. My guest on December the 14th is Crystal Vandenacker from the Netherlands. She will be online live and we will be discussing the upcoming energies of 2015. If you would like to learn more about me and my show, you can go to aboutoneness.com where there will be many videos of channelings and teaching as well as my upcoming guests. On the EEN Network 2. On Saturday evenings, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, the Pied Piper and Texas Rebel hosting Disclosure Now. Disclosure Now is the On the Edge of Our Seats show that covers all topics of disclosure, from the world's most famous and obscure UFO cases to cryptozoology, conspiracies, and all things that go bump in the night. Pied Piper started his journey in Michigan in 1993 as a preteen seeing Bigfoot and never could get enough of investigating all things paranormal. Texas Rebel is a wild Texas man who loves the same journey and has studied these same things for years. Join them as they cover all things in the human experience that can just not be answered by anyone. And coming soon to the Enlightenment Evolution Network will be The Resonance Intention, hosted by Neil and Soul Bar. The show will be on Sundays, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. The Resonance Intention is a show dedicated to all things frequency and vibration. They will showcase conscious musicians who infuse frequencies into their music and have set out to uplift and raise the vibration of humanity through their music. They will have in-depth discussions with various artists about their passion, purpose, and personal journey that led them to where they are now. Additionally, they will routinely have guests on the topics of free energy, technology, and other quantum modalities, technologies that are coming into existence now. The Resonance Intention is a platform for artists, musicians, and inventors to increase their awareness of their personal approach in order to contribute to the paradigm shift that we are currently within. And remember, you never have to miss any show on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 or 2. All shows are available to listen to again on Block Talk Radio immediately after they air on playback. Or you can go to the Enlightenment Evolution Network YouTube page and listen to any of the shows from the network. All right, back to the show. All right, everybody, we are back here at the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with your host, Rob Gauthier, special guest tonight, Brad Johnson, the founder of 
ConsciousMatrix.com, the founder of the Psychic Academy. He is our special guest, and we're going to bring him back on. He will be channeling Adronis tonight, so if you want to ask Adronis a question, we still have a couple spots left for callers. Uh, if you'd like to call in, area code 347-308-8788, you are welcome to jump right in. Make sure that you dial 1 after the call is connected so you're queued in to speak to the host. And that way, we'll know that you're on listening to ask a question instead of just calling in to listen from the phone. We're going to reconnect. Brad, are you there, brother? I'm I'm here. Thank you. I'm here. Uh, all right. Beautiful. All right, everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to get um, Brad to connect to Adronis and start taking questions for your calls. Again, 347-308-8788. Um, is there anything you want to tell the listeners about your connection process um, to Adronis before you get started of how you make that connection yeah. in your own mind? Yeah, I'm just going to give a bit of a brief introduction to Adronis for those who are not familiar with his energy. Uh, again, back in December of 2008, I was able to connect with Adronis through automatic writing. Uh, <clears throat> after that time, I was uh, doing some automatic writing with him for a couple of months, and it wasn't moving until about the, the, the uh, springtime of 2009, where I started to move into a vocalized channeling with him. Uh, so Adronis himself basically represents uh, an aspect of my own higher self. He exists uh, within his own words uh, through the sixth density of Sirius, uh, where he exists as starlight consciousness. Uh, he is actually able to manifest bodies holographically. Uh, so there are times, uh, there's also opportunities for him to manifest uh, uh, phenomena within the sky as well too. Uh, some people have seen him as uh, you know, flashing orbing orb, uh, orbs of light. Uh, some people have seen him as flashes in the sky. Uh, some people have actually seen him materialize into uh, their room or you know out in public, whatever it is. Uh, there's many things that he is able to do, uh, just uh, existing as a sixth density consciousness. Uh, but he basically represents me to the grandest extent that I can uh, share relating to this probable reality uh, existing within the sixth density of Sirius. We are very much the same soul essence. Uh, so he comes through, and uh, he has a very uh, just wonderful personality. He's very, very deeply masculine. So a lot of his energy is very, very rooted, very grounded as well, too. Uh, his feminine counterpart, representing Rayar, uh, is much more into the illumination of feeling, nurturing, you know, kind of almost like a, like a godmother, so to speak. Uh, that really represents a lot of her energy. But uh, Adronis would represent the masculine energy of Rayar, Rayar representing the feminine energy of Adronis. So when Adronis comes through, you'll get that strong kind of masculine feeling vibe. Uh, there's been some really interesting uh, uh, you know, phenomena that's taken place in challenges at times. Sometimes when I've done uh, challenges uh, through groups, uh, people have actually almost fallen out of their chair because the energy has been so intense when Adronis comes through. Uh, but that is known to happen. Uh, well, I don't think it'll be happening on the phone here or anything like that, but if you do have a chance to see a live event with Adronis, uh, you really feel the energy uh, very, very strongly through the anchoring of your body. So I always encourage that if you're always in the areas uh, that I'll be uh, hopefully traveling to in the next little while. Uh, also, just before I begin, uh, there's just a new update to the Psychic Academy right now. Uh, just a little tidbit, if you guys want to go to the psychicacademy.com, you'll see that there's a free consultation video that's there uh, that will also allow you to have some bonus uh, items as well that's available. This was recently just put up during the break. So you guys can go ahead and check that out, and this can lead you into enrollment as well. So again, Psychic Academy can definitely lead you eventually into challenging, but again, working on with you a lot more uh, with psychic ability and other forms. But anyways, back to Adronis. So I will go ahead now and connect. It just takes me a moment or two to bring Adronis through. And uh, once he's in, he'll give a brief introduction. And then just feel free to uh, share any questions that you guys have uh, with you, Rob, or with anybody else that may call in. Uh, when you do call in, just feel free to introduce yourself, say your name to Adronis, say hello, you know, really being able to represent a strong mirror of friendly contact, and that's really what can make the channeling interaction uh, very much more exciting. So I will go ahead now, bring Adronis through, and we'll Thanks. get started. Here we go. <clears throat> We are here at this time, and we bid you greetings, and thank you very much for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who are tuning in to this particular broadcast 
being brought forward through your internet collective consciousness. What would you like all who are listening to the sound of this conduit's voice here and now to allow yourself to get relaxed, get comfortable, and tune in to the vibrations of Sirius so that you may synchronize, harmonize, and align to all of the information that we have to share. Also understand that all of the information that we shall provide today is simply that of our perspective, our point of view. For all knowledge, all information, all creation itself resides within your very heart, being, and soul. We often understand that there are individuals who would be very, very happy to communicate with us personally. We understand that, yes, this is something that you can do, and we understand the excitement that you hold behind this, and that this is a very real possibility that you can develop through yourself through the aid of two of our symbols. The first symbol representing that of a blue shield contained within a black background or a cosmic background, as it were, to where upon this shield exists a golden tree of light that is fractalized. So very similar to the idea of a fractal pattern forming a tree and being able to imagine golden luminescent light appearing throughout the tree contained upon this blue shield. This is one particular connection to our energy. The second connection to our energy would represent that of an eight-pointed star, that which would represent a simple circle and being able to draw out rays of light representing eight particular lines. On the left and right position, or what you would know as the 9 o'clock and the 3 o'clock position upon this particular symbol, being able to draw a triangle on this left and right side, and being able to fill it optionally with white light if you choose. This is another particular acceptable symbol that you can utilize to connect with us through our sixth density domain. So if you choose and if you would like to utilize these particular symbols to allow personalized contacts with us, you certainly may. A third option that we will also bring up is simply being able to say our name within meditation. For this will allow our energies to bond together with you. And depending upon your connection to that frequency, we are able to communicate with you in a certain way, depending upon your level of comprehension relating to our frequency bandwidth in compatibility with your own. So we want to thank each and every single one of you for, once again, the opportunity of this interaction today. How may we be of assistance to you? Hello, Dronus. Uh, welcome to, uh, back to the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. Thank you for coming today. We thank you for allowing this interaction to take place. Great. The, the, before we get to our callers, I do want to ask you one question. It is on the top of everyone's mind with New Year's coming right around the corner. In the, your perception of the Earth's energy as a collective consciousness, what do you perceive is in store for the year 2015? As this particular conduit has shared is that, yes, it is a year of integration you will notice that there will be, in that sense, a much more riper sense of energies upon the time of 2015. Now, as we have talked about in previous dialogues, we have stated that 2015 will allow certain forms of political transformations, monetary transformation, new invention in regards to what you would know as your grassroots systems taking place. But more importantly, you will understand how the energy is that of ripeness. You will understand how new innovations are visiting you all the time. This is more so of the idea of taking action in regards to the integration of understanding yourselves as advanced human beings contained within a third and fourth density nexus, which basically represents the idea that it is the opportunity to express yourself. It is the year to bringing about great transformation through yourselves as you integrate into the components of that which you naturally are, which represents benefit together with yourself, together with all other beings upon your planet, together with animal consciousness, with plant consciousness, working together with the earth. There will be certain forms of earth changes that will be taking place upon 2015. Nothing drastic, as it were, in regards to what we can scan of the energies now. There will be certain areas that may have more intense earth changes than others upon the planet. But again, this is all part of the gravimetric effect as your earth aligns in that sense, crossing across other particular planes of existence, planes of boundaries that are now moving you into higher platforms of conscious awareness, moving into higher octaves of dimensionality and density consciousness. This is all part of the plan. 
you will also understand that there will be certain forms of celestial forms that will be taking place in regards to comet passings. But again, this will pale in comparison in, in regards to the idea of your next year, 2016, the year of illumination. Again, more of these particular transformations will be taking place. More of your governmental sectors will start to arrange themselves to where they feel that they are attempting to sweet talk the people, but you understand that there are other agendas behind such actions. You will notice that as the right hand is waving at you, the left hand is behind the back doing something else. And many of you will be able to see exactly what that left hand is doing in that way of understanding. Again, you will be moving more so into innovative technologies that will assist you on educational ways, educational forms. You will be looking more into the idea of, shall we say, advanced transportation forms of inventions that will be coming upon your planet in regards to the idea of the eventual replacement of fossil fuels upon your planet. You will start to notice that you are, in that sense, inventing new formats of technology relating to not only transportation, but also in regards to platforms that assist you in working together as a community of the world, representing new organizations, representing new sanctuaries, representing new epicenters that will help you to learn together as a collective organization, as a collective body of humanity. This is what's coming together within your year of 2015. There are a lot more that we can reveal to you, but again, through the appropriate timing, allows the inundation of being able to share more of this information appropriately with you, as well as being able to ask the right questions, as it were, for us to reveal more. Absolutely, and that would give me one expansion question. I know the callers are dying to get to you. Um, short and uh, simple question UFO sightings have picked up worldwide. Is there any hot spots that you're able to perceive, at least with the energy the way it is now for 2015? Guadalajara, Mexico is one. Mount Shasta, California is another. Areas within, shall we say, some of your Southern American regions, such as Argentina and Peru and Brazil, those are actually quite vast hot spots, as it were. There are certain areas more so around the tips of the borders that are, in that sense, very prominent with common activity in that way. You will also notice that, again, areas within your own United Kingdom, such as Wilshire Plains, contains a great deal of, shall we say, UFO sightings, as it were. Also areas off the coast of Florida, also areas within your Arizona, areas within what you would know as Alberta, Canada, areas of what you would know as the northern and southern regions of your planet in regards to arctics of course we understand that not everybody can make it out there but again much of the activity in regards to extraterrestrial consciousness and sightings in that way are happening there also there are also certain areas within russia itself such as the kremlin as well as moscow that receive certain forms of sightings here and there in regards to certain associated extraterrestrial consciousness that are allied in regards to certain governments that are a part of your Russian or Western and Eastern European sanctions. There are also areas in regards to, shall we say, India, areas in regards to Nigeria, Chad, areas specifically, again, between New Zealand and Australia. So, again, there are many different forms of areas that are considered to be your, quote-unquote, hot spots and being able to detect a very vast array of UFO activity, as you call it, being able to look into the idea of sightings. Now, again, much in regards to the instigations pertaining to these sightings are all part of a dynamic awakening taking place, that they are simply being shown because it is more of a prelude of what is to come. As we have been talking about nearly four, five of your years of time now, being able to look into the idea that much of these particular sightings will start to increase, that you are moving gradually to seeing how the extraterrestrial presence is becoming so much more prominent that it really can't be ignored anymore. It's basically feeling that you are just holding on to a structure, attempting to save the structure, preventing it from collapsing under its own weight. However, this will be inevitable so that structure can collapse, that, so that in the background now you can see what has been hidden from you. And so this is becoming more and more prominent year after year or even week after week and month after month. So this will continue to take place on a much more grander scale. There are, again, certain opportunities in regards to group consciousness that will allow more intimate sightings of this nature pertaining to extraterrestrial liaison communication and between many of your own liaisons as well to allow certain forms of quiet 
group activity between such cultures to take place in secrecy for this time. Thank you very much, Jonas. That's wonderful to hear. Um, We're going to start taking callers now. And for all the callers who are there, we have enough callers where we can do one question apiece. So please state your most important or most excited question that you have for you. And if we have time, we'll go back through the ring again. Uh, First caller, 360, area code. Who do we have with us this evening? Hi, this is Deborah. Hey, Deborah. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, oh I know. Oh, Great. Deborah. Sorry, I oh. muted my mic. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, oh, this heck. Jonas is all yours. I, thank you. All of a sudden, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> um, hi, Adronis. This is Deborah. Hello, hi. Deborah. Welcome. Uh, I've spoken to you before, and uh, yes. you've been very helpful. Um, my question is uh, about fear. And yes. um, about a week ago or so, I decided to... Um, address fears within me and to try to get rid of my fear just all by myself with no, <laughs> with no guidance and it's uh, been quite interesting because uh, mostly all that I've done is uh, been aware very very aware of every tiny little small anxiety and tiny little fear that I have it's been quite amazing my mind has been yeah. quite uh, filled with those things and I'm wondering if you can offer me some guidance I did have an amazing dream two days ago, I'll try and be quick, uh, where I, it was dark and it was, um, I was uh, lying with people on a, on a couch and my foot was hanging over and literally alligators were trying to snap my foot. And uh, I couldn't speak for, the, for a while. You know, the, the fear comes up when you can't speak. And all of a sudden, it all came together. I yelled in a really loud voice, stop biting my foot. And I actually was lucid and so I yelled it like, when I was awake and in the dream, and it felt fantastic, and it, it all ended up well. But if you could help me um, figure out about fear within me yeah. and how well, to purge the, it. The depiction, the depiction of your dream simply represents the symbolism of life gnawing at your ankles in regards to the idea of unfairness or mistreatment. And so the whole idea is that fear simply manifests itself in regards to a mental block that you have created based upon the inability of looking into how life can represent an ally to you. So the whole key here relating to fear is being able to understand the essence, the, shall we say, seed to its creation, to how it was stemmed in regards to magnetizing its alignment together with you. The whole idea is that fear only becomes fear when you engage it with panic when you engage it with anxiety, when you engage it with deep emotional imbalance. This is where fear can become very, very horrifying. This is where it feels that it can be very intimidating and that you really do not want to look at it. If you are able to understand that fear is beginning to come up and you are able to just close your eyes, take a deep breath in through your nose, pause for a moment, and let that breath out, you are now bringing yourself into the neutral zone. You are bringing yourself into the state of neutrality. As you ease your mind, as you ease your heart, as you ease your body, you are able to open your eyes and realize that the transformation has taken place representing the previous image of fear into that which is now understanding. The fear itself now represents a connection to transformation where it is able to become much more well-spoken to. You're understanding more about how that fear has come into place. Now, regardless of whether this is a nightmare in regards to your dream state or whether you feel that this is something that you're experiencing within your life that may be a very, very fearful situation, look into neutralizing yourself with the breath. As you move into neutrality, you understand exactly why the fear is there. The only reason why the fear intensifies is because you put up, as you say on your planet, defensive shields. As long as you feel that you have to defend yourself, you are only intensifying the fear. Look into the innocence that is behind the fog of the fear. If you are able to understand the nature of the innocence behind the fear, you will fundamentally understand that it is innocence that will provide itself together with you being able to dialogue together with you and being able to see this shard of your soul that has been working very diligently to attempting to get your attention so that it can come back home. And this is the whole idea of representing fear. 
Fear itself simply represents the inability to change. Again, it's not something that is looking to be cast aside. It is not looking at something that is attempting to be ignored or feeling that it needs to be moved away from because it may be so, quote unquote, hideous to look at. The only reason why the fear has escalated to this elevation of, shall we say, grotesque nature or hideous nature is because it had to reach a certain extreme in order for it to get your attention. As long as you're able to give the point of the subtlety of fear attention right away, it will no longer, shall we say, drown yourself into the aspect of that anxiety and of that panic or of that defensiveness. So our particular recollection is dealing with the amplification effects of how fear itself right now is attempting to come into your life. And again, neutralizing yourself and seeing the innocence behind the fog of fear and being able to bring that soul shard back together within yourself. And from those points forward, after being able to resolve those fears, looking into the subtlety signs of how fear translates together with you so that you may detect it right away and understand the acknowledgement of its presence, forgiving yourself and the aspect of the fear externally, and then being able to achieve successful liberation through the encompassing and amalgamation of that soul, of your shard, that shard of your soul, shall we say, coming back together into your wholeness of being. As you continue to do this, this is what brings you into a continual harmony where reality is working together as an ally. That is the understanding. Well, thank you very much, Jonas, for that. And we're going to take our next caller. And thank you, too, Deborah. I'm very, very glad to see your, your face and your fears doing well. We'll go to our next caller at 631, area code. Who do we have with us this evening? Hi, this is Clarabelle. Hey, Clarabelle. How are you doing? Good, and you? I'm doing great. Uh, you may ask whatever you wish to Adronas. Hi, Adronas. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. Clara Val, is it? Yes, it is. Hi. Um, Hello. Be- Hi. Before I ask my question, I want to give a little shout-out to Mark in the chat room. Um, my question is about shadow work, and um, yes. does it ever end, or am I just stuck in this perpetual cycle of darkness, or do we come to a place where we just like become like a new human being? Well, yes, that is eventually what takes place. The whole idea is that you're moving into different bars relating to the idea of brightness. So the whole idea is that as you move into the depths of blackness relating to shadows, and you are able to successfully acknowledge, forgive, and liberate those aspects, the bar itself rises into more of a grayish or light grayish tone to where the challenges in regards to the shadow self seem much more subtle, even though they do take up a great deal of attention within your life. If you were to look back, let's say, for example, a year within your life where you feel that you had done a lot of intense shadow work in regards to the depths of your own darkness, in comparison to now, you will notice that the challenges are actually a lot lighter. And that's the whole idea, is that you are functioning as a wave in a constant state of elevation. As this wave of consciousness continues to elevate, the challenges become more so the betterment of yourself rather than the idea of the worthiness of yourself. And so the whole key here is being able to move yourself into the integrative and transcending patterns from the idea of feeling worthy to the idea about how you can better yourself now. So the challenges take form in regards to an improvement of a higher elevation where that challenge represents the betterment of the self. Wonderful, Adronis. Thank you very much for that. Um, and we'll go to our next caller. Our next caller is Nicola in, on Skype. Uh, go ahead to Adronis whenever you're ready. Hi, can you hear me well? Yes, can hear you perfectly. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Uh, hi, hi, Jonas. Um, I connected with some ETs last night. I think their names are Osh and Shushush. So I just wanted to know who who they are to me. Uh, what do they want, and can I trust them? All right. Firstly, with the names themselves, they are not appearing in regards to any database that we can recommend in that sense. So they are representing that of another particular extraterrestrial consciousness that is beyond our particular capacity to scan. 
who they are would represent, again, certain extensions of consciousness, that they do appear to have certain forms of family connections together with you in certain ways, or in that sense, connections through somewhat of abridgment between a family connection on a celestial level. In regards to trusting, well, you have to ask yourself that. It's all about not us saying that, well, don't trust them, because that's not what it's about. And we're not saying, oh, go ahead and trust them. That's not what it's about either. It's being able to look into the names as you have been given names pertaining to these particular beings and being able to scan them together with your heart. The whole reason why we do not really want to look more so into the idea of being able to give you advice to trust them is that this would infringe upon the idea of the free will that you contain. So the free will principle, which represents the law of confusion or the law of choice, is meant to be remained intact for you to look deeper into these aspects to see exactly how they feel. It is not meant to be of a denial of your own feeling to see exactly how you trust or may not trust them. It's being able to become very, very honest with your flow of feelings that as you say those names out loud, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? As you feel that sensation, let that sensation be the momentum that generates the response in regards to the interactions of these entities. We thank you. Oh, beautiful, Adrona. Thank you uh, for taking that. Thank you, uh, Nicola, for a beautiful question. And we will move to our next caller at the 804 area code. Who do we have with us this evening? 804? Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, um, uh, hey, I'm going to Hey, um, Hi, Rob. What's up? So, you were one of the very first people that I had ever uh, really stumbled upon in the whole channeling thing, and I just wanted to say thank you because, I don't know, it was really just kind of an introduction to all this, and then, like, you and Brad are pretty much the only people that I listen to and really consider worthwhile, like, just for me and my personal uh, thing. But, uh, Jonas, I have a question regarding just myself and projecting the true me, the one that I feel is there at all times, kind of asking me to come through and brave through all these fears, but it seems like I get so close and then I drop into a hole and it spirals out of control until the hole is so big that I have to now climb out and feel empowered and I'm just really tired of this cycle and I really want to live to the fullest and you know, it seems like a lot of people have questions about fear, but if you could just enlighten me on the the least resistant way to experience life to the utmost as my true self, then that would be great for me. All right. First of all, would we be able to get your name, please? Christian. Christian. Hello, by the way. Hi. The whole idea relating to the aspect that you have just described is that this is simply how you perceive reality to be. It's the idea that you want it to become better, but there really is no true genuine nature to the article of actually seeing it become better through your own eyes. The whole idea is that other people's opinions become very, very strong as a weight upon your shoulders to where you can't help but acknowledge what other people think of the world. And as you see that happening through your own inner circle relations, through people upon your internet or through your media, etc., this becomes much more of a bell that is ringing that is preventing you from seeing the harmony of reality to what it can be through the validation of your own opinions, values, and understandings. The key here is really being able to take the effect of what you consider reality to be as the genuine gospel to yourself, of realizing that I would like to be part of my whole self. I would like to connect in that way. I would like to see reality work together with me as an ally, but it's not going to be given to me. It's something that I need to see in the wholeness of my own genuine nature to allow reality to correspond in this way. The reason why it hasn't is because, and the reason why you've been feeling tired about it is because, again, much of the implications pertaining to perspective of how others see reality is what you have adopted in regards to an aspect pertaining to somewhat subconscious, but moving more into the conscious self, representing the idea of reality being this hole you're climbing out of. So the whole idea is being able to clean your slate and now start anew.
start developing innovations through yourself that you feel will represent a clarity into the reality that you prefer so that the wholeness of your being is something that is acclaimable rather than the idea of feeling that something may still be rotten within reality because this is what I'm receiving from others and not so much myself. So it is more of your own personal empowerment. It is more of your own personal will to be innovative and creative to develop a reality that you see through your eyes, that you feel through your being, that you experience through your soul. We thank you. Thank you, Adronis. And uh, Christian, also want to thank you for the large compliment paid to myself and to Brad. And I know uh, Brad gets that energy as he's in there. He he understands what's going on, too, with your compliment. And both of us um, are very appreciative of your kind words. So thank you very much. And love is definitely being sent to you on your journey. The next caller that we have is coming from the 641 area code. Who do we have with us this evening? Hi, this is uh, Russell from Fairfield. Russell, how are you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to hear from you guys. Great to hear from you. Uh, Adronis is all yours. Any questions you've got for him, feel free. Yes, I do. And Hello, thank Russell. you for connecting me. Thank you, Adronis, for being here. We thank um, I just want to say how moved I have been by the story of Lyra and what a you know, just a, a really brilliant piece of information that has been to me personally. Now, as it pertains to today for this uh, question, now, I have a lot of energy that's running, you know, especially out of my crown chakra and connecting uh, into some larger groups, I can tell that. And if you could explain to me part of, uh, or as best you can, what, what's going on with that, that's because it's quite intense. Much in regards to what you are being installed to represents that of artificial intelligence. Now, the whole idea is that these simply represent one-way relays, assisting in the idea of a natural crystalline form to actually associate a connection to your being to actually start receiving light-based codon sequences that you may commonly describe as sacred circuitry or light language in the idea of codex. So the whole idea is that the codex properties pertaining to your own equilibrium is now being rearranged in regards to functioning, in regards to future contacts with particular beings that will exist within the Pleiades. These beings exist within the star that you would know as Mira, M-I-R-A, and also exist within the, the star that you would know as Elcione. These are two particular neighboring stars contained within the group of the star cluster that you would know as the Pleiades and are working together in regards to this reprogramming of your fundamental matrix through the codex that is necessary to allow yourself in regards to increased telepathic transmissions that will become much more clairvoyant and much more vivid in regards to your standard dream state cycles, which will be apparently much more active within your next two to two and a half weeks of time. All right. Thank you, Adronis. And also, thank you, Russell. Um, and to answer you back, you're very welcome for... I have the show with Brad and Adronis on. Very, very happy. The next call that I have is 352 area code, which I believe is Sister Savita. Am I correct here? Absolutely. Oh, how are you doing, Sister? <laughs> I'm good. How are you guys? Are... Oh, we're doing awesome. We're we're having a fun time. Great show. Uh, Adronis is here with us, so I'll let you ask him whatever you'd like to. Thank you. Hi, Adriana. Hello, and who are we speaking with? Savita. Savita, hello, welcome. Hi. Um, uh, first, I want to thank you because uh, it, it was by chance. I did not know that you're coming in show tonight. This morning, um, it just happened that I was. Just... Yes, yes, and um, I, I, I was listening to you. I had a. Um, a little uh, session with you a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Yes, and do I was listening. To, yes, and I was listening to it, and I couldn't understand that, and it was so beautiful. So thank you so much. Um, well, thank you as well. Yes. Uh, so um, I have a question regarding that. Um, I have fragmented mind, so that's why I have tons and tons of thoughts. And because of that thoughts, I just uh, go back and fro forth in happiness and 
not the sadness, but an alignment. So uh, I want your advice or suggestion. What do you want me to tell me? Uh, what can I do to have more grounded mind where I can ground in my happiness and in my joy and in my life? So my this um, too much, too too many thoughts don't bother me. You know what yes. I'm saying? What we can yes, what we can recommend to you is being able to purchase three specific flowers. These three specific flowers will represent the following: that of what you would know as lilies, that of what you would know as roses, that of what you would know as violets. These are three particular roses, or shall we say three particular flowers, including the rose, that will represent certain forms of energetic grounded equilibrium within yourself. When you do particular meditations, let these flowers be in appropriate vases forming the degree of a triangle where the rose is at the front, where the idea of the feeling of the violets is at the bottom left-hand corner or what you would know as the left, again with the third flower at the right. Being able to integrate yourself into the triangulum of these three particular flowers and being able to bond to all three in recommendation as you feel their energies out of love to ground you further into the earth. This is only a template so that you are allowing the forms of these particular flowers to ground roots within yourself, to bring yourself more corded to the earth, that when you start to ground in that way, much of the thoughts that you've mentioned are being dissipated because you are more so immersed into the beauty of these three particular flowers that will allow you to reach a state of transcendence in moving you more into a grounded quality so that Mother Earth is able to speak with you more gradually. So as this starts to happen, just feel free to utilize these three flowers in this way and being able to bring yourself into this grounded state will assist in the alleviation of many of the thought forms that may represent, shall we say, the thoughts of others to become subsided. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas, and thank you, Sister Savita. I love you very, very much, and I'm so glad you had a chance to find that synchronicity to get your question here today and that you just joined us. I love it when you always call in. Thank you, Sister. The next question will go to David from Germany, our dear friend. Uh, do you have a question for Jonas this evening? Good evening, Rob, and good evening, Jonas. Yes, I have a question. Hello. Yes, who are we speaking with today? With David. David, hello, David. Hello. Um, I would like to know what you perceive uh, to be my greatest fears as of now. Your greatest fears as of now. Well, again, as we can state that due to the idea of free will infringement, we cannot really provide the idea of your greatest fear, but we can certainly represent the idea of other fears that are, in that sense, lingering. Much of it relates to, again, the common practicality relating to the idea of death. Now, we're not saying death of the physical body, but the idea of the, shall we say, anxiousness to transform into new platforms that may not be fully in the state of relationship to what you may be currently aware of. So the whole idea is that we would ask you, David, what do you feel is your greatest fear in this moment? All right. Thank you, Adronis, for that. Uh, we're going to take the next caller. Is he no longer dear... on the line? Oh, I, I am sorry. Uh, I didn't realize that you were sending a question to him. Sorry about that. Go ahead, David, and uh, you can answer Adronis there. Sorry about that. <laughs> sure, no problem. Um, I would say to move forward. All right. And again, this is part of the, shall we say, peripheral blockages that we represent to the idea of death. Now, again, all death really represents is the aspect of transformation in its grandest form. So, again, platforms that you may not be fully aware of. And, again, through the idea of you stating moving forward is, again, your own trusting of knowing what your greatest fear is. The whole key here is, is to have no expectation. It is the expectations within life that cause much of the fear behind the ability to transcend, to move yourself into new fundamental understandings about yourself. So the whole key is being able to, again, entrust yourself, realizing that where you're going is all part of your heart path. Now, your heart is incapable of sabotaging you. 
So as long as you are able to tune in to the frequency of the heart and follow the path that it is sharing with you intuitively and being able to interpret that through the action of where it is attempting to take you, where you're not holding expectations, you will be quite relieved to discover that when you follow this path, how easy it will become for these points of transcendence to come into your life that will gladly show you a whole new version of yourself that you will be overjoyed to experience. That is what we can share with you. We thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, too. We appreciate uh, all the callers who are calling in. We also appreciate your question, David. Uh, We'll move to our next caller here, Mark, uh, our friend from Australia. Are you here with us tonight, brother? Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm doing great, brother. How are you? Fantastic, thank you. Fantastic. And hello to Adronis. Hello. We we say hello to you. Thank you. (laughs) It's fantastic to uh, connect with your energy, actually. Beautiful. We thank you. Yours as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Adronis, I just have a question relating to um, the Arcturian region. Um, I've I've had contact recently with a um, hybrid mantis group. Uh, a civilization. Uh, the name that I was given was Zephyr, and and I followed that up, and and there was a contact made. Um, I'm just wondering, are you aware of that group, and can you provide any uh, generalized information uh, um, as to their interest in um, you know, the evolution of, of what's happening here? Please. We are aware of this particular group, and we would refer to them in the way as insectoid consciousness scientists. Basically, what that represents is that they have a science in regards to creativity through love. And so much in regards to the arrangements of actually working together, not only with this particular group, but many other different benevolent, as it were, mantis groups themselves are actually, in that sense, highly intelligent, highly intellectual, and highly scientific, simply because they are very, very passionate in regards to experimenting with other different forms of biological life to represent shall we say, synthesis with their own creative energies. And so they are creators, as it were. And so as they work together with you, they do work together with certain forms of genetic properties to assist in tweaking your energies to become much more commemorative and aligned with, your, with their particular domain in comparison together with yours, forming together that of a Vesica Pisces bubble. And so that this bubble itself moves itself closer and closer together into a mutually compatible frequency domain. And that much in regards to the tweaking of certain genetics that are working together with you right now is basically helping me, helping you to open up to certain forms of frequency bands that will help you to actually discover more scientific basis on a consciousness level that will assist you further in regards to the inauguration of particular consciousness expansive techniques that you will be able to achieve in meditation that will bring you more and more closer to, shall we say, not only these particular beings, but other beings contained within your oversoul that are actually looking to communicate with you further that will allow a further connection of an amalgamation effect to take place and bringing yourself into a plethora of guides whom you will be able to naturally contact with. All right. uh, Can you perhaps um, expand on something for me? This is something that I've, received a lot of questions for, but no one's ever asked Trevor Ard if this. Do you know what uh, perhaps the percentage of benevolent to maybe malevolent or type 2 um, insectoids are? Because I know that a lot more insectoids are coming to the forefront of communication. Are you aware of that, at least within the galaxy, Adronis? That approximation is indeterminate. All so because right. it all depends in regards to the awareness of the amount of groups that are available as well as the groups that are continuing to show up. So the whole idea really is that, again, everything is simply frequency and vibration and energy based upon those who wish to vibrate in resonance to that which they would consider to be appropriate through the polarity delusion that they create. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, Adronis, for expanding on that. Um, I have a question here from a chat uh, from Marie. She says, my question to Adronis, how can one free up their throat chakra to function at its full capacity? I keep getting my throat infection, and my singing voice isn't as strong as I'd like it to be, so I feel I need more work on my throat chakra. What can I do? We were just about to share with the individual to sing more. The whole idea is that not singing through the idea of preparation, 
but singing spontaneously in regards to that which just makes you feel more alive. Being able to go out to nature, being able to hug a tree, being able to be around the splendor of the animals contained within the forest, within the parks of your planet, and being able to just naturally sing out in the open, even if you feel that you may be off key or two in that sense, it really doesn't matter. What matters is more so of the expansion and expression together with your voice together to bringing itself more into the alignment of the complement of your ability to sing. So again, the whole idea is that when you're noticing that there are certain forms of discord or distortions contained within the throat, it really has the idea of being able to speak more of the idea of truth. And in this way, it is more so about singing to your truth that more so represents the epitome of your happiness altogether. We thank you, Marie. All right. Thank you, Jonas. That was wonderfully beautiful insight. Um, we're getting closer to the time of the end of the show. So what I'd like to do is give you the opportunity to say anything that might have been left unsaid here with the callers this evening or anything that you feel is important for any of the callers or the callers as a collective to carry with them tonight and to carry home in their heart. We understand that many of you have, again, many different questions relating to much of your own personal transformations that you're experiencing, and we understand that fear often comes first before trust. And again, as we have stated, that much of the recurring theme tonight has been on questions mainly relating to fear and, in that sense, concern. The whole key is that we understand that many of you can be afraid and many of you can be concerned. The whole key is being able to admit that to yourself. And as you continue to admit that, look into how the strength of the admittance to that fear has now allowed you to align to the harmony of being able to move into its acknowledgement, to allow yourself to forgive it, and to allow yourself to achieve liberation. Again, we say allow a lot because it is all about permission slips. It is being able to ask yourself, can I give myself permission to forgive my fear? And being able to move beyond it, looking at it as a stepping stone. The whole idea is that fear has an intelligence to it. It is a natural embodiment, a natural emotional dynamic that has come together because it is attempting to knock on your door and saying, hey, this is truly what's available to you but you're constantly moving your energy into that which you feel you are unable to change. So look into the idea about how transformational change can be a constant visitor to your reality so that through constant change and for the idea of your reality to prosper further, initiate the idea of transformation, transcendence, acknowledgement, and forgiveness to move yourself into these higher alignments so that fear itself now becomes a natural process of energy that is now magnetizing back into your being, harmonizing with the wholeness of your soul, and now you can move into higher states of consciousness where your reality in regards to how it works together as an ally can truly begin. We thank you once again for the opportunity of this interaction this evening of your time. I am Adronos of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to the host and to all others. Thank you very much. Farewell for this timing, and we now return to the conduit. We will speak to you again in the infinite moment of now. Goodbye. Thank you, Jonathan. For those of you who were tuning in in the middle of the question and answering, uh, this is the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with your host, Rob Gothier. Special guest, Brad Johnson, who just got done doing Q&A with the entity channel's name, Adronis. Um, and when you get back with us, Brad, let us know you're here. I'm here. Oh, beautiful. You are quick. I love that. <laughs> um, we're we're about out of time for the evening, so I, I just want to give you the opportunity to let everyone know um, if they tuned in a little later where to get a hold of you at, if they want a session, if they want to check out the um, academy, or if they want to check out any of your work. Um, let them know where that is, brother. Yeah, again, so uh, <clears throat> excuse me about that. Uh, my book, Rainbow Wisdom, is available on my main website, which is ConsciousMatrix.com. Again, C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S, Matrix.com. Uh, again, through ConsciousMatrix.com, you can access the Psychic Academy directly, or if you want to uh, just do a search with that, just go to the PsychicAcademy.com. Again, that's www.thepsychicacademy.com. Again, feel free to enroll there. There's a lot of exciting classrooms that are happening uh, and again, if you want to grab Rainbow Wisdom, it is available now online through the website. 
and there's a direct link to Amazon as well too. Uh, feel free to leave a testimony behind. Let me know how you think what you think about the book. Uh, again, it's a short and sweet read. It's basically done within a few hours. And uh, if you guys do have any other questions relating to what I offer, please feel free to contact me, info at consciousmatrix.com. So, Rob, thanks again for having me on tonight. Oh, well, thank you, brother. Every time you come to the show, you bring an amazing energy, amazing insights, and amazing channeling. So thank you for, for joining us, and I'm sure we will have you on again very soon. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Take care. All right, brother. Love you. Bye. All right, everybody, that was Brad Johnson, uh, Channel of Adronis, ConsciousMatrix.com founder. I cannot add any more energy to this show than what has already been added. It is a beautiful, uh, packed show of energy. So what I'll do is I'll explain to all of you that we're going to head out tonight with a couple beautiful songs. Um, Freeman, the band, has given us two songs. One of them is called The Golden Monkey. The other is... Uh, what we'll do more than the world, and both of these songs are one of them. The Golden Monkey is about expansion of consciousness within yourself through various means. The other one has to do with love and the struggle that we have loving ourselves. So both of these songs are brilliant. This is the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with your host Rob Gothier, and this has been an amazing night. Thank all of you guys for for connecting to us. If you'd like to come on too. Uh, next week, we are going to um, have some guests. Uh, actually, for the next few weeks, we're going to have guests. If you want to know who they are, go to Facebook.com and then type in Enlightenment Evolution Hour, and you'll see all the upcoming guests. Or go to TrebChanneling.com, go to the EEN Network tab or EEN Radio Network tab, and go to Rob Show. You'll see the next six or seven up-and-coming guests, wonderful guests line up. Uh, including Nora Harold, including uh, Granville Angel, including all of these great people who we have coming on. So go there, check it out. And here we are with Freeman, Golden Monkey. You can look it up, uh, Freeman, and the name of the album is Freeman. The song Golden Monkey followed by More Than the World. Enjoy.
Good night, everybody.